everybody and welcome back to In the Stacks with Julia and Christina. And today we have a really special guest, our friend Emily Blackmore. Hello. Children's librarian for the Newfoundland and Labrador Public Libraries. So today, in honor of our special guest, we are going to talk about children's books and our favorite children's books. So some of our favorite children's some books. Some of ours. Because it's we'd incredibly be, difficult to choose favorite books. <laughs> absolutely. We'd be here all year long <laughs> talking about books. Um, so I'm going to get started. I'll start, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Okay. Because I love chickens. Anybody that knows me know that I love chickens, and I tell people that they're good eggs all the time. That's true. And it is true. true. Yeah. Um, it's my it's my <laughs> saying. It's like my catchphrase. You're a good egg. I also um, love this book, though. So again, like this is why it's so hard to choose a favorite. <laughs> exactly. Minerva Louise and the Red Truck by Janet Morgan Stoke, and it is a lovely book about a chicken without a brain. Minerva Louise is lacking a few brain cells, but what she lacks in brain cells, she makes up for in imagination and a good attitude and a willingness to be happy regardless. <laughs> so Minerva Louise in this book goes for a ride in the red truck and she sees all of these amazing things. And everything she sees is the, has the potential to be something really cool. So like this one here, um, they're going through town in the red truck in Minerva Louise is driving along in the red truck and she see how happy she is. She looks so happy because she's going for a ride. And then when they go along, she sees a silly barn wearing a hat, which actually the rest of us would call a church. But Minerva Louise sees something different. So what I like about these books is that she has a positive attitude and she doesn't actually look at everything the way everybody else does. Which and there's a whole bunch of Minerva Louise books. So Absolutely, yes. If you like one, you've got to read them all. You've got to read them all. <laughs> it's like Pringles. You can't stop at just one. So that was my first book. Your turn. <laughs> my first book is The Bad Seed by Jory John, one of my favorite children's authors, illustrated by Pete Oswald. It is very hard, as Christina pointed out, to pick a favorite book, and asking a children's librarian to pick their favorite children's book is impossible. So I just picked one of my favorite authors. <laughs> One of, one of the many, of many, many, many favorite books. There's many of them. But this is one that my kids really like. I have a two-year-old that loves Jory John. And the bad seed is bad. I love the illustrations in this because you can tell just from facial expressions that he is bad. Yeah, I love, the, I love the pictures. The illustrators are an amazing They're job. so good. And the author also made a book called The Good Egg. Yeah. He did? And, <laughs> and there's a cookie one. The Smart Cookie. The Smart Cookie came out recently, so. So you can see, you know, he's saying he's a bad seed, and this is the way I'm a bad seed. But it lists all of the bad things that he does, and um, they're quite funny, and they're bad in a way that children would really enjoy. He does things, he says, how bad am I? You know, of course he's going to explain it to I us. I like that all of the other um, fruits and vegetables are scared of him. They're like, look at that bad seed go. All Coconut is hiding her child. Yes. Coconut eyes. Yeah, she's she like, might no. gaze upon his look badness. Look away, look away. He does things like, he doesn't put his cart away at the grocery store. He's late to everything. He doesn't wash his hands or feet. These are all wonderful and very funny examples. But I wanted to show everyone my favorite example. Is he says, he does a lot of other bad things too, and he's in a library where the sign says quiet please, playing a drum kit very loudly. <laughs> and I think that this is very funny, because you don't necessarily have to be quiet in the library anymore, but it's quite a familiar thing for people. Yeah, it kind of is. Yes, yeah. But the crux of the book, of course, is that he decides he doesn't want to be bad anymore, and you find out why he's bad, and he explains it, and it's very funny. And like all of these books, I feel like they're very silly in a way that kids really enjoy. And they're very relatable to small children, especially. Yeah. So my kids giggle a lot when we read these books. So very them, good yeah. recommendation. And any time that you read with your kids and they're giggling, you're doing something right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So Definitely. Jory John, check him out. Okay, so I uh, I couldn't choose a favorite. <laughs> You'll notice so, Christina's stack you know, is having a hard hard time with this. Yes, uh, <laughs> now, but I didn't choose a favorite book. I chose a favorite author. So I love, and anybody who's ever worked with me in the library knows how much I love Karma Wilson. She is probably my favorite children's picture book author, although, I mean, it's hard to choose a favorite children's picture book author, but she's definitely high up there. And one of the things I love about her is she has a huge, huge variety of books to choose from. So if you don't like one of her books, there's probably one that you will like because she writes quite a lot of, of different stories. Um, so she's most well known for her bear books. 
and bear wants more is perfect for this time of year because it's all about when bear comes out of hibernation and is absolutely starving Me too. and has to eat everything and i understand <laughs> right and then i want to go is... into hibernation though i just yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this one is big bear small mouse which is a great book for opposites um, and what I love about her books is she has a really nice rhyme scheme, which makes for wonderful read aloud experiences. And she also uses all of the correct names and words for different things. So all the animals are referred to by their proper names. Um, she talks a lot about different learning concepts. So opposites, colors, all that kind of stuff, which are wonderful, wonderful for kids. And feelings. Um, she talks feelings, about feelings, yeah. Making new friends. Um, things that you're scared of. Things, yeah, exactly. And they're really just content. wonderful, but they still have a lovely story and a lovely rhyme scheme that makes it really enjoyable to read with kids. So I absolutely love Karma Wilson. They're fun to um, read. You're right. Her books are, are hard to read really as well as to read. They're very lyrical. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah. So that's her Bear series, which is wonderful. But another book by hers that I love is The Cow Loves Cookies. So if you want something more silly, this is where it's at right here because the title says it all. It's about a cow. That loves cookies um, and you can even see the little farmer hiding the cookie behind his back so the cow can eat it right off the picture and you go through the book and you learn about what all the different animals love to eat so the horse loves hay and the geese love their corn but the cow, cow loves cookies, cookies. Um, and it's absolutely adorable and silly and wonderful so highly and it's recommend. those repetitive stanzas in her book that make them really good for younger kids yes, to absolutely. feel like they're reading along and participating in the story with mom and dad when they read yeah because it it, it re it's a reoccurring thing and it comes and you can like like pause and then they know oh it's time for me to say the thing you know the cow loves and cookies. repetition is so important when you're learning to read yeah. it's something that is one of the things that really does help kids that are learning to read seeing the same word over and over again and then they recognize that word the more the time goes by yeah. So I couldn't choose a favorite book. I chose a favorite author. So sorry, I broke the rules. That's okay. <laughs> you always does. So she always does. <laughs> she can't follow directions. Um, so uh, before we move on to our second book, um, Emily, like I said, is the children's librarian for the whole of Newfoundland and Labrador public libraries. And we have a really special thing that comes up every summer is our TD Summer Reading Club. Did you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. The TD Summer Reading Club runs from about the end of June uh, right up until September. And it's meant to get kids in the library and reading throughout the summer. Uh, one of the reasons that they do the club is because kids, especially school age kids, lose a little bit of their reading skills over the summer, especially if you're not actively trying to read with them the way that they would be with teachers or in yeah. their classes. True. So they had found that they they're... They get distracted by the sunshine. Distracted. Exactly. <laughs> As we all do, especially here in St. John's, where we yeah. have... What is the sun? But um, you can read outside. Take your books outside. So some of what the Summer Reading Club is supposed to do is combat that and get kids reading for fun. It's really just about making reading during the summer something the kids are doing and that they're doing it with books that they're really excited about. So we here at the AC Hunter Library in St. John's have a launch party every year um, and this year we're having one on the 25th of June which is kind of the official kickoff for the Summer Reading Club and you can come into the library and get um, materials like a little booklet for kids where they can mark off what they're reading, bookmarks, stickers, and um, all of our summer programming and displays and stuff are library swag. This library swag. I love me some stickers. So, so you yeah, can go that's, that's absolutely, but you can go to any <laughs> library in Newfoundland all summer long, and summer reading club is happening, and kids can still participate no matter where they are. So it's a really fun program, and it's something that we really like doing. And so we're going to sure have YouTube content this year. For we summer. are. Yeah. I was just going to say. Excellent. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, like this video as well. And check it out during the summer and see what Emily has in store for challenges you will see for me you every and week. your children. I will be on oh, the YouTube channel so every week all summer. This face. <laughs> okay, so our second books. Second books. <laughs> all Signs of Kisses by Nancy <laughs> Tafuri. Again, she's one of my favorite authors. I also I, love this I love, book. I love her <laughs> and her illustrations because they are so heartfelt and sweet. And um, in this book, all the different animals give different kinds of kisses. So the illustrations in the book are one of the biggest draws for me. Um, the illustrations in all of her books are detailed but soft. And um, I find that when my child was small, my youngest, um, 
like when she was a baby, she would try to reach and pull the picture, like the things off the page because they were so detailed and to her they seemed so real, she wanted to touch them. So, um, and just remember that there's all kinds of kisses, but the best kiss of all is Mommy's Kiss Goodnight. And this is my second choice favorite book. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I do love the illustrations of that book. I do, I love it. it. Yeah, she has other books too, and, and again, the illustrations are equally lovely. Well, I picked um, a book by my favorite author, one of my favorite children's authors. We've already established you can't have just one. <laughs> Pringles. But I picked a local author, Cheris Cotter. Um, this one is Screech, Ghost Stories from Old Newfoundland. Something I didn't mention about the summer, summer Reading Club is that this year the theme is fairy tales, fables, and myths, and that includes ghost stories. So I wanted to pick something that would pull into that, but also something that when I was a kid I loved ghost stories. I used to look for them, and I have a seven-year-old now who's also interested in ghost stories. And you know what would be a super fun activity? Campfire with the ghost stories around the campfire. Absolutely. Get so, some s'mores happening. So exactly. these are all local. So this is Screech, Ghost Stories from Newfoundland by Cheris Cotter. It has some illustrations by Genevieve Sims. And all of these are ghost stories from Newfoundland. And there's a little note at the beginning where the author tells you that these are all stories that um, are real. That they're not ones that she made up. They're ones that people told her. her. With her, yeah. And um, oh, it has a little map of Newfoundland. It has a little map of Newfoundland. tells you where the stories are all coming from. And on the inside, be prepared. There's at least one blood-curdling screech in every story. Mm -hmm. And she has a little foreword about why Newfoundland is so haunted and said, all the stories in this book were inspired by true stories people have told me. And I really like that for each story, it tells you where you heard. So the first one is the ghostly longboat from Beta Verde. So it's... I love the illustration. And then she has little information about the, the place, right? So it's really yeah. interesting to be able to say, yeah, the place, every it's story true. that's about Bacalao, like to be able mm -hmm. to say as a Newfoundlander to look at this book and say, well, I've been there, yeah. or I wonder what other ghost stories are in my community. And I grew up in a place called Glovertown, which does have some really cool ghost stories. So mm -hmm. I wanted to say that if you really like spooky stories in particular, all of Cheris Cotter's works are wonderful, and she has some great middle grade aged and younger novels. Some of them that are also about ghosts, <laughs> but yep. this is a collection of local Newfoundland ghost stories, and um, I think that they would be great as Christina said around a campfire this summer. Um, so I'm going to talk about an author again, and I have two of her books here. Her name is Janine Atkins, um, and these are both novels in verse. Um, she has written other books for um, middle grade aged um, kids, um, but these ones I love. Um, so they're they're both fiction but they're both based on the stories of real women. So this one is Finding Wonders, Three Girls Who Changed Science. Um, and she picks three women who were scientists, who, be, who made great strides in different scientific fields, but whose stories have kind of gotten lost to history. Because at the time that they each lived, women didn't do these things. Right. Women were not scientists, they were not paleontologists, they were not astronomers. Um, and so they made not just great strides in science, but great strides for um, women um, at those times. But they never really got any credit for um, what they accomplished until much, much later. Um, so these are wonderful. Um, so each, um, this one deals with three, um, as the title says, women. Um, so each little section of the book is, um, is a different woman who made a, um, who made a contribution to the scientific world. Um, but they're, they're fictional stories, but they're all inspired by real people and um, what they did. And at the end, which I love, is she gives a little bibliography. So if you are interested in the women scientists that she talks about, you can go and find the works that she used to create her story. And the other one I have is Grasping Mysteries, Girls Who Love Math. And this book is a little bit thicker. <laughs> Because there's actually of, people out there who like math. There are people who like math. There are people who love math. It's a sickness. Not just like. And it's these sickness, are <laughs> 10 women who made at least strides. 10. At least 10. At least 10, <laughs> at least 10 women have loved math over the years. Um, and these are 10 women who have made great strides in the field of mathematics. Um, and there's, so there's 10 chapters. Um, and each chapter is a different woman. Again, fictional stories based around their real lives. Um, and what I really liked about this is that there were women that I recognized, but also women I'd never, ever heard about. Um, so, for example, Katherine Johnson 
is in here of NASA fame. Hidden figures. Um, hidden yes. figures fame. Um, so she is in here, but there's also women in here that I had never ever heard about who were just amazing people. Um, you know, books like this are so wonderful, not just as windows into a world or a person, but as gateways for kids to be interested in the science behind them. Yeah. You learn about someone and you think, well, gosh, I want to know more about what they and were doing. And it gives you different ways to look at, so math is not always addition, subtraction, or multiplication. Absolutely. Math is used to map the ocean floor. And I'm a huge proponent of the fact that kids' books are not just for kids. Absolutely. So if you are an adult who enjoys um, fictional stories based off of real people, or you like novels and verse, I would highly, highly recommend these. Um, I think they can definitely be enjoyed well, as an adult. Like kids books too. Um, but if you're also a parent or an aunt or a grandparent and you're looking for something that you can read with your child, I think these would be great to read alongside um, with a child and it would give you a great conversation starter too. Mm -hmm. And um, anywhere that you are in the excellent. province, if your public library doesn't happen to own a copy of that, you can just request it and it will be brought in for you from whichever library in the province has this because now we have system-wide holds. We do. Yeah. So we're no longer a bunch of different libraries. It's really we're one, all one big library. One system and you can get any of the books on this table or in any of the libraries or in your library. Or the ones behind us. <laughs> so make sure that you contact your local library staff if you have any questions or in, you would like more help finding these books or other books for you and your children. And also check out the cool TD Summer Reading Club events that will be happening at your library in Newfoundland and Labrador. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Bye!